Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint, and today I'm going to show you the difference between probably two of the most popular gaming monitors of 2024. We have the LG Ultra Gear 32 GS95UE and the ASUS ROG PG32UCDM. Now these are both 32 inch 4K OLED monitors with incredible specs, but they do have some big differences that do set them apart. So today I'm going to compare the two side by side to hopefully help you decide which one's best for you. But as always, any questions you've got, just drop those below and I will try to get back to you. And if you need a kind of deeper dive or a full unboxing of these monitors, you'll be pleased to know there is a full review of each of these on the channel already. Okay, so before we talk about the main differences, here's a quick rundown on the specs. So as mentioned, they are both 32 inches with a 4K resolution that support up to 240Hz. They have two HDMI 2.1 ports and a display port. They also support 1440p, VRR and over 1000 nits peak brightness. So on first impressions, these appear to be pretty similar, but there are about 10 things that could sway your decision one way or the other, with one of them being the new dual mode on the LG which unlocks 480Hz, but more on that later. Okay, so I wanted to very quickly touch on the design of these two monitors. I think on first impressions they both look great and have a premium look to them, but the ROG definitely looks more like a gaming monitor with its branding and the overall look. The LG on the other hand looks a lot more minimal and clean and there's practically no branding at all. Now looking around the monitors, they both have pretty slim bezels and borders around the screen and the overall profile of the panels are relatively thin. There is however this huge chin at the bottom of the ROG with this red logo built in along with the red LED shining onto the desk. Now even though you can turn this LED off in the settings and go for a full on blackout look, you're still going to be stuck with this piece sticking out of the bottom of the screen. Now whether you like this notch at the bottom of the screen I guess is personal preference, but it definitely looks so much better with the LEDs off. As for the LG, well there's no branding at all on the front of the screen, so it instantly looks a lot cleaner. There is some minor branding on the base of the stand including the LG and the Ultra Gear logos but that's it. Stick this on a monitor arm and it is ultra clean. And even though you never really see the back of these screens, here's what they look like. So they've both got some LED lighting where the ROG logo makes up part of those LEDs. Whereas the LG have gone for these two strips of LEDs either side. Yes the LG looks cleaner but again you never really see the back of these screens apart from when you unbox it. And even though both of these screens have LEDs on the back, neither of them are bright enough to really work as ambient lighting. So if you do want to go for that RGB gaming vibe, you'll still need to add your own LED strips to the back. Now you've probably noticed this already, but the coating of these two screens are very different. The ROG is glossy, which is something that a lot of us have been asking for, whereas LG are using an anti-glare low reflective coating. Now which is better is personal preference really, but let me show you the main differences between the two and my experiences so far. Oh, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. So the glossy finish means we're getting deeper and better colours, image clarity is slightly improved, and the overall picture quality is sharp. But there is a downside to having a glossy screen, and that's the obvious reflection issues. If you've got a bright room, or you're placing it opposite or near a window, you're going to see this and it could be distracting for you. But as we have this with most OLED TVs anyway, you just need to manage the light in your room. If you're playing in a dark room or at night though, this would be of no concern to you. And then there's the LG which has a matte or an anti-glare coating. I know this is an interesting subject as there's a clear divide in the comments between who prefers matte and who prefers glossy. Now the advantage with matte is you don't need to worry too much about the lighting or the reflections in your room. And that's because the anti-glare coating does a great job of diffusing those reflections. But when there's any kind of coating added to a screen, you're going to have some kind of compromise. In this case, the image looks a little bit flatter while viewing it during the day due to that matte finish. Now personally, I don't mind the matte finish as my room is pretty bright, and at night or in a darker room, the finish of the screens makes almost no difference at all anyway. Now over the last few weeks of using and testing both of these screens for gaming, I've come to the conclusion that they are both great. They both look incredible when you throw any 4K content at it, but there are some differences and compromises that you're going to need to make if you're seriously looking at these two screens, as unfortunately, neither of these tick every single box. So one of the biggest specs that we've seen mentioned about the new LG monitor is the new MLA Plus Tech. This is what's supposed to give us a brighter screen. Well, the good news is it does. On paper, the ROG has a peak brightness of 1000 nits, while the LG is rated at 1300 nits. I've tested this and I've seen similar results on a 3% window. Although while using them, it's not a night and day difference as you might first expect. It is so marginal that most will struggle to tell which is supposed to be the brighter screen. In fact, if you take away the white color test and do a real world HDR test, I actually found the QD OLED actually appears brighter in some games and scenes. 
Saying that, they both get bright enough for normal gaming use in both SDR and HDR, although the jump isn't what I originally hoped for, but that's typical as QD OLEDs will be slightly brighter than W OLEDs anyway. It just means the MLA Plus tech has closed the gap rather than surpassed it. And then we have colours and image quality, which are really impressive on both screens. The LG has a DCI P3 colour gamut of 98.5%, while the ROG states 99%. This means on paper the ROG's colour reproduction and vibrancy of colours is slightly better. Now this is something that we expected to see as the QD OLEDs are often better in this area, so it's not really surprising. Okay, so another area worth comparing are the black levels. So we know that OLEDs are incredible at producing those inky blacks and it's one of the biggest selling points of an OLED. Now there is a difference between the two and that's because the LG is using a W OLED panel while the ROG is using Samsung's latest QD OLED panel. So the LG has very good black levels and has a display HDR true black level of 400. You can see here there are no compromises at all on the black levels even with the matte or the anti-glare coating. The blacks really are jet black and if you can get the lighting right in your room it produces some of the best blacks you can get from a monitor. I can watch this during the day or at night or with my studio lights on and it consistently looks perfect. And then we have the ROG. So as this is using a QD OLED panel we've got a couple of compromises here. The first being that as it's a glossy panel it means if you're viewing it during the day or in a well lit room the black or the dark areas will reflect which means you might struggle to see what's on the screen. And the other issue is the slightly raised blacks. It's a trait that we've seen with QD OLED TVs as well, but due to the anti-reflective coating that's being used when a light source is directly shone onto the screen, the black levels appear to be raised. Now this might not be something that bothers you, but you won't get the same level of black as you would from the LG. You can see this quite clearly here when you show the same black or dark image on screen, and the ROG looks more grey than jet black. Now for me personally, I actually prefer to see the black levels appear to be more black than grey, and it's definitely one of the downsides of a QD OLED which does put me off using this one. But there is one feature that the ROG monitor has over the LG monitor and that's Dolby Vision support. So this means for the content that you watch that supports it, you're going to get a far nicer and better experience. It's something that I often look for when I'm choosing a movie or a TV show I want to watch, as I much prefer watching it in Dolby Vision. And you know what, it's actually surprising that we don't get this support on the LG monitor as they do feature on our OLED TVs. Now when it comes to the performance of these two screens, they are pretty much the same. They both offer that 4K resolution and support up to 240Hz. They also support VRR or the Variable Refresh Rate and give us NVIDIA G-Sync and AMD's FreeSync Premium Pro, so games will run smooth and stutter free. They are both also rapid with a grey to grey response of 0.03 milliseconds. Now I've been using it today to play the new Warzone update and I've been swapping between the two screens just to test them out, and to be honest they have both been incredible. Oh, and for those that asked in my last video, this is a scuff controller that looks like an edge controller. I specced this a couple of months ago because I liked the look of the edge controller, but I wanted the extra paddles and the buttons that come with the scuff. And if you did want to go ahead and spec your own scuff controller, I do have a discount code below. Now, if you are a console gamer, it will obviously support the 4K and 120Hz that you need. And if you're on PC, well, you can make the most of the full of 4K and 240Hz. But there's one feature that the LG offers over the ROG, which is the new dual mode switch. This is a physical button that will allow the monitor to switch between 4K and 240Hz to 1080p at 480Hz. Now this is quite a niche feature as it's aiming at PC players who want to make the most of 480Hz while playing competitively. But you're also happy to drop the resolution down to 1080p as opposed to 1440p. Now most monitors that support a high refresh rate like this don't also offer 4K. So the fact that you can have both a 4K screen at 240Hz and a 1080p screen at 480Hz means it's a pretty big deal. It's like having two monitors in one if you need both of these features. Now I would guess that most of us use external speakers or headphones while we're gaming, but if you needed or wanted to, well the LG does have internal speakers built into the screen. This means on the rare chance you want to sit back and watch something straight from the monitor with sound, well you can. Now I'm not saying this is a huge selling point of the LG, but it's definitely convenient to have them built in when you need it. Also the speakers they are using are classed as pixel sound, so instead of the speakers being downwards or backwards firing, they come through the screen instead. This will create a far more immersive experience and they actually sound okay. Now I'm not saying I would replace my headphones with these, but the fact is I can play the odd game with sound through the monitor instead of wearing headphones. As for ports and connectivity, on the whole both of these share the same options around the back. We've got two HDMI 2.1 ports, a DisplayPort 1.4 and some USB ports as well. That's all pretty standard so not enough to sway you one way or the other. However, the ROG does come with a USB Type-C port that is a huge advantage over the LG. This will not only allow you to connect your laptop or your MacBook to it and use it as a productivity monitor, but you will be able to charge it as well. 
This instantly makes the ROG a viable monitor that can be used for both gaming and productivity. Whereas on the LG, you would need to use adapters or an HDMI, which won't charge your laptop at the same time. So yeah, if you were looking for a single monitor that you could use for both gaming and work, the ROG is awesome. Oh, and the ROG also has a smart KVM switch, whereas the LG doesn't. And this is what allows you to use multiple devices with a single keyboard and mouse. And if we take a quick look at the menus, you'll see they've got very similar options and settings. I mean, you can see what resolution and frame rate you're running at. You can also change the picture profiles, adjust their brightness and colors, and you can enable a few different gaming settings as well. Things like the crosshair or the FPS counter. Oh, and they both have OLED care settings like the pixel shift and the screen savers. To be honest, I just set these to default and let the monitor run the regular pixel cleans when the monitor is off. And in case you wondered, neither of these come with a remote control like we've seen with the previous versions. I guess nobody used the remote control and that's why they got rid of them. And we have got to talk about the warranty and the price of these screens. So firstly, the warranty. Well, the ROG comes with a three-year warranty that states it will also cover you for burning. And that is a huge selling point. It is something a lot of us ask for and it will give you peace of mind while playing. Whereas the LG on the other hand comes with a standard two year warranty as opposed to three and it does not specify burn in anywhere in the warranty. So the fact that it's not mentioned would normally imply it's not covered either. So if you are using this as a desktop or a productivity monitor, it might be something worth bearing in mind. And as for the price, well, neither of these are cheap. And even with all of the features and the specs that they are packing, it is hard to justify just how much this will set you back. So are you ready for it? The ROG comes in at $1,300, while the LG comes in at $1,400. This pricing kind of blows my mind. I mean, that is more expensive than a 42-inch LG C3 OLED. And whether it's worth it, again, comes down to the features that each of these offer and if you see value in them. So if you ask me which monitor I would buy, I would honestly struggle to give you a straight answer. There are so many factors here, including the overall design, if you like a matte or a glossy screen, the risk of burning and the raised blacks, the dual mode switch, and if you'd actually use it, and of course the price. Right now, I think I would pick the LG based on the matte finish, which works better in my room, and the ultra clean branding. But I would actually recommend the ROG due to the lower price, the three year warranty, the USB-C port, and the improved colors. Unless you really need that 480Hz mode, then go for the LG. But then of course, if you're on a console like me, the dual mode is pointless anyway, so it really comes down to the screen coating. Either way, there are compromises to make on either of these two screens, and you need to weigh out which one you think is better for you. But let me know which of these two monitors you think is better, or which one you would rather have in your setup. Would it be the LG or the ROG, or maybe something else? Well, hopefully I answered everything that you needed in this video, but any questions I missed, just let me know below. And don't forget, I did do a full review of each of these two monitors. So if you need to know more about the ins and outs of each individual monitor, check those videos out next. Now drop a 2024 OLED in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my top games to play in April video next, as it covers some interesting titles that we're seeing released over the coming weeks. Well, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and follow me everywhere. Until next time.